Yes, welcome back to Why in the Morning. Special thanks to Joy um, Muchachi and Callum Eval for that amazing segment uh, to start our Wednesday on a laughing note. Remember, we are going to be airing uh, the Uganda game uh, for the African Cup of Nations. We'll give you more details on that uh, right here on Why in the Morning and, and our mother channel at KBC uh, Channel 1. I go by the name of Barry Moses or it's Barry Moses on every social media platform and it's time for Strength of a Woman. So uh, we have Libby who's an artist and uh, an activist and then we have James who's an activist and she'll tell us more about her activism karibu sana thank you very thank you much, very much. Mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. so your camera is number four mm -hmm. uh since libby you've been here before uh, where's him gany i have gany answers so uh a brief intro uh of um, good morning, everyone. My name is mm -hmm. Jane. I'm on your work. I am a consultant mm -hmm. uh, and also an activist mm -hmm. around issues gender based violence mm -hmm. and um, currently working on projects in and around uh, issues gender based violence. Just trying to make sure that nothing happens to a woman the mm -hmm. same way it happened to me. So, yeah. All right. So, yeah. you have a story. This, that's why this is so dear to you. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I have a personal story. For mm -hmm. me, GBV is really personal. Mm -hmm. So that is how I started All right. activism. You're going to explain to me how you wear that smile so confidently. <laughs> And uh, you look the beautiful. Lord, uh, the Lord, <laughs> <laughs> the glory, the glory, <laughs> the glory. Yes. All right. uh, what about you? Your camera is still number four. Let them straight right. into that. Uh -huh. Um, good morning. My name is Libby Dambo. I'm a musician, um, mm -hmm. and I have a background in media. Mm -hmm. And I currently have released a song about GBV. That's mm -hmm. how I got into GBV, specifically rape. All right, yes. So, you don't have a personal story? No, I'm uh -huh. not a survivor. Uh -huh. Um, but I have survivors around me and mm -hmm. that's what made me mm -hmm. um, write the song and do the project. And get into again. this yes. particular, all right. Uh, so uh, I like you guys to take, where did you guys meet first? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> this is an amazing combo. Uh -huh. We met in school, mm -hmm. in university, yeah. a couple of many years, I think. Eh, it's a lot. It's I feel six old. Years, <laughs> yeah, I feel six old years already. Ago. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, you have yes. not met... I won't say the name. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, so you met in school. Yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is Daystar. Yes. Yes. And this is where you had this uh, ordeal. Yes. Or this incident. Yes. All right. So uh, we are not going to talk so much about it, but it happened. Yeah. And then you had to transfer schools. Yeah. And uh, you got a child as a result. Yes. Who's turning how old now? Uh, four in September. I'm so proud. Four in September. Yes, You're yes. so proud. Yeah. All right. I'd like to know what was running through your mind post this uh, ordeal. Um, I felt like I would be judged. Mm -hmm. That is one. I've always told people that I'm a person who's very close to her parents. Mm -hmm. And I tell them practically everything that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So when, the, uh, when I got shaped, I didn't know how to tell them. Because mm -hmm. I felt like that would be... They'll ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Why were you? you get yourself yeah. in this position? So I didn't really say a lot. Mm -hmm. And I slipped into depression. Mm -hmm. And when I slipped into depression, that was even before I knew I was expected. Mm -hmm. I was even admitted in hospital for a while. Mm -hmm. So when my parents realized that I was admitted, they came and they were told by a friend of mine who I had told what mm -hmm. had gone down. So they were really um mm -hmm. agitated mm -hmm. and also very hot because i'm a person who is known libby will tell you mm -hmm. my my lifestyle was practically you'd know where i am mm -hmm. at what time uh -huh. if i'm not in You're worship a people team, person yeah uh -huh. but also um that the things that i wouldn't get involved in mm -hmm. so if i wasn't in worship team that mm -hmm. is in school mm -hmm. i was with my friends mm -hmm. in the hostels if i was not in the hostels i was in class uh -huh. and that Did was you have my any leadership position um, yes, in worship team, I was uh -huh. in charge of the Agape Library, the uh -huh. one for the Christian whatever. So uh -huh. um, that is what I used to do. Right. So when that happened, I slipped into depression. And during that time, that is when we realized that I was expectant. Mm -hmm. And that really took a toll on me because uh -huh. I was running mentorships for girls. Mm -hmm. I was the one who was telling people how they should be pure, not engage in sexual activities till they get mm -hmm. married. Then now I show up pregnant. Uh -huh. So it was a lot that happened with me and mm -hmm. also with my family right. so for us it was kind of it was a shaky time for mm -hmm. us as for me as jeans and for my family also all right did you seek any legal action because i'm told uh, most of these cases go unprosecuted and uh if prosecuted it's very hard to prosecute rape cases 
in all honesty, we started the legal process mm -hmm. when the person showed up. Mm -hmm. But I'll be very, very honest with you. When mm -hmm. it comes to the legal system in this country, you need to have a certain position. You have to have money a certain way mm -hmm. because the offender will easily pay up if mm -hmm. they have money, mm -hmm. like my, my offender could easily yes, pay and up. the burden of proof lies exactly on you. <laughs> and and now i'm not coming from a well of family like mm -hmm. yes we manage just fine mm -hmm. but i don't think my dad or my mom had that money kind of money to, to buy power yes uh. and and for us like I, my father is a pastor and mm -hmm. we believe in forgiveness mm -hmm. so we had to come to a point of you know what god will fight for us mm -hmm. so i moved on seeking counseling and all mm -hmm. this and i will really that is why i'm working on projects around GBV because right. I realized that the legal system is not fair mm -hmm. on the person who has gone through rape or has been beaten by the husband because mm -hmm. they will always find a way the person the offender will always find a way of working mm -hmm. their way around it and gender-based violence is real in Kenya right now it's real people are just not talking about it enough and victims are not coming out enough yeah all right uh, my next question is uh, having a religious background did this uh, was this part of the reason uh, you decided to keep your baby um really no mm -hmm. <laughs> um i remember when i was told i was expecting my mm -hmm. child they gave me two choices mm -hmm. because now i conceived i didn't even love this person I did, anyway mm -hmm. so I was given two choices, either to get rid of my child or mm -hmm. to keep my child. Definitely, mm -hmm. as genes, I wanted to get rid of my child. Mm -hmm. And I remember my father's words. Sometimes it drives me to tears till date because my father was like, you know what, this might be your only child in this lifetime. And we are going to take care of this child. Not you are going to. We are it's going to take care Yes, thing we now. are going to take care of this child. Mm -hmm. And my parents have been very instrumental. Mm -hmm. I tell people every time I don't know the first thing that like the meaning of being a mother because mm -hmm. I gave birth mm -hmm. so I stayed with my child for three months mm -hmm. and my parents took over after that and they sent me back to school mm -hmm. and being that my dad said that mm -hmm. I was like okay there's a reason and a purpose why this child is here at this mm -hmm. time and this is how I conceived him mm -hmm. so I carried my child full time and delivered mm -hmm. and I think during the pregnancy it was not easy but I had to learn to love him Mm -hmm. because I didn't want to give birth to a child who is angry mm -hmm. and my child is a very happy boy for mm -hmm. people who met him will tell you that he's a very happy boy Mountain, happy yeah. baby boy yes all right so uh just to get a perspective so there's so many people who go through the same thing you've been through yeah. they never came out uh <clears throat> but mm. the, it's a period of confusion yeah yeah uh, right after I'm trying to understand what were some of the things people were telling you because you get a lot of misinformation from your friends and people yeah. around you they'll tell yeah. you i personally i'd never do this if this happened to me yeah. i'd never what are some of the things people came around to tell you that you felt uh, like were really toxic um before i even came up because i i wrote my story in 2016 around february mm -hmm. and this happened in 2014. Mm -hmm. no one knew i had gone through rape mm -hmm. no one knew no one knew. I just disappeared from school, she'll tell you. Mm -hmm. I disappeared. The next time they saw me, I was posting a picture of my son, and everyone mm -hmm. is like, Wow. She has a baby. Yeah, uh, now no. she has a baby. Yes. Who's and child? the judgment comes. Union. Yes, praise yes. and worship. Surely. Uh, <laughs> she was doing off campus. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so there was a lot of judgment mm -hmm. before I spoke. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was a personal decision because you need to heal. Mm -hmm. I believe in not crying over spilt milk mm -hmm. and for some reason i just needed to get my life back mm -hmm. so i decided to blog and mm -hmm. just write my story mm -hmm. and that was your escape that was your outlet yes All so right. i wrote my story like nothing unfiltered nothing censored mm -hmm. anyone who reads that story today will tell you how can they get to, to read the blogs Look oh, them straight into the eyes. Oh, so my uh, blog is mm -hmm. Lovely Me Web. Mm -hmm. Lovely Me Web mm -hmm. at WordPress.com. Lovely Me Web yes. at WordPress.com. So it's yes. very important to find an escape or something yes. uh, that you can use to release uh, exactly. the tension. Exactly, yeah. All right, you'll be telling us how you managed to keep a brave face like this, work like nothing happened, and mm -hmm. smile. Libby, uh, mm -hmm. in a few, yes. uh, all right, Libby, uh, you're, uh, you're, you've been with people... Uh, I don't want to call them victims, survivors. survivors You've been right. with survivors. You have survivors around you, uh, from kids to grown-ups, yes. right? All right, this rape culture. I was walking in town sometime, mm -hmm. and then this guy, 
uh, tells this woman, uh, if your dress is above your knees, it's a mini skirt. Mm -hmm. I thought it was all fun and games, and I was like, yes, facts, facts, facts. And then he goes like, if you're raped, then it's your own problem. Then we were like, yeah, that part, no, edit that part. We don't like that part. So uh, there's so many things that go around this rape culture. And what are some of the things that you've come to learn about this rape culture in Kenya that I really uh, should really leave the building? Number one, rape culture finds it easier to blame the victim mm -hmm. and not hold the perpetrator accountable. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'll give, personally, I know for Jane's story, mm -hmm. everyone blamed her for mm -hmm. what happened based on her story. Judgment was number one. They judgment. judged her first. Or judge her and mm -hmm. not the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. Remember, you can judge two people mm -hmm. if an act happens. Mm -hmm. There's the person who did it and the mm -hmm. person who received. Mm -hmm. But then what we do is we find it easier to blame the victim. So we'll say your mini skirt mm -hmm. is it was asking for it. Mm -hmm. You will say that where you were walking at night mm -hmm. or how you were dressing in mm -hmm. the house or what you were saying or how you act. You know mm -hmm. the people who are very friendly and very bubbly. Mm -hmm. You asked for it. You mm -hmm. wanted it. So rape culture is centered on that. Mm -hmm. That we Blaming blame the victim, the victim yeah. and not hold the perpetrator accountable. Mm -hmm. Rape culture is how we view women as objects, sexual objects. It's mm -hmm. called uh, misogyny. Mm -hmm. Where men look at women and just see sex mm -hmm. as opposed to seeing this a is a human being. Mm -hmm. So then when, uh, when it comes to rape, people are like, but you are with a man. You know, what were you expecting in a room like this? Uh -huh. What did you want? I went to someone's office and I was raped there. What did you want? You were with a man alone, mm -hmm. you know. So the mere fact that I'm a woman and I walk into a room and I'm in a space with a man mm -hmm. and we are having some sort of relationship, be it small, mm -hmm. like just we've just met, or be it hardcore that we are married, mm -hmm. it, it entitles this man to sex. Mm -hmm. Why? You get. Or rape culture says that a common phrase that men say that she was wet, Mm -hmm. So she was asking for it, uh -huh. forgetting that it's a biological process uh -huh. that women can get wet, uh -huh. you know. So that's rape culture. Rape mm -hmm. culture is looking at rape and seeing that this is something we don't talk about. Mm -hmm. And so we pay hush money, mm -hmm. you get, because we need to dial the story down mm -hmm. that it may not ta tarnish the image of the community, of the company mm -hmm. that has the scandal. So people are forced to hush about it. This yes. is something that you don't like so much yes. about it. I All right. So uh, do we have cases where parents of victims or survivors tell them, don't talk about this story. It's going to bring embarrassment mm. to our family. Exactly. What would you tell such parents? I tell them that it's happened. It's happened. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is one. And I keep saying this one. Ensure that the survivor knows that there's someone behind them and fighting for them. Mm -hmm. Ensure the survivor knows that it's not their fault. Mm -hmm. And ensure the survivor knows that there's going to be a day they're going to get justice mm -hmm. because you are there for them. Mm -hmm. Secondly, is paying hush money doesn't stop the perpetrator from doing it again. Mm -hmm. If you pay hush money, like um, a report was, I think it was Citizen yesterday, mm -hmm. posted a report um, about um, how parents are becoming that a report has, has been released that parents are becoming more dangerous to children mm -hmm. now because more defilement cases are being shown are, are being reported that parents are the perpetrators yeah. so how do you pay hush money to my father mm -hmm. who's defiling me then how do you protect me from being raped again mm -hmm. or being sodomized mm -hmm. you know how do you protect someone if they are walking around Mm -hmm. The only way we seek just it's justice is getting them imprisoned. Mm -hmm. But then you see, the burden of proof is put on the victim because mm -hmm. when it happens, you have to go to hospital, mm -hmm. get the proof mm -hmm. taken, you get. Mm -hmm. But most victims, because of how defiling it is, you want to just clean it off. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I haven't gone through it, mm -hmm. but the thought of, someone raping me uh -huh. and going and taking this gift that is sex uh -huh. because sex was created as a gift to be given uh -huh. someone taking it from me and denying me the power to give mm -hmm. and then i have to smell them on my body i have to feel that you know uh -huh. so automatically my response is going and cleaning myself uh -huh. but most people don't know that you have to go to hospital get your proof uh -huh. because the the law the sexual offenses act shows that there has to be proof that has been shown that uh -huh. this act happened uh -huh. and this person did and not it's consent. it's beyond reasonable doubt. Bizo yeah, that's beyond a lot reasonable of work. doubt. Uh -huh. And that's the problem that we have. M most people are not aware of that. Most people are not uh -huh. aware that even um, the Sexual Offenses Act says that attempted rape uh -huh. is actually something that someone can go for in prison uh -huh. for. All right. 
So, uh, so the problem, we have come to a conclusion that the problem is the perpetrators. The yes. problem is not the survivors or it's the victims. It's nothing yeah. to do with us. All right. So uh, what do you think is the problem with the perpetrators? Is it mental illness? Is it just uh, kicking morals out of the door or what? I think it's a mirage of problems. Uh -huh. There are people who have mental issues mm -hmm. that now they exact the, the, what they feel onto mm -hmm. women sexually uh -huh. because that's how they feel they can do it. Uh -huh. um, remember, sex I rape is not about the sex, it's about uh -huh. power. Uh -huh. Rape is about exerting power on the victim, mm -hmm. showing the victim that I am in control. Mm -hmm. So for many of these perpetrators, like for a father with a child, they are going through their own motions. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they see this child as an, a place where they can exert the power. Mm -hmm. There are people who are actually psycho. Mm -hmm. Let's just start there. They are mm -hmm. pedophiles. Uh -huh. from the beginning of it it's just something that it's a psych it's mm -hmm. a psychological, psychological problem, problem that they've not gotten help so we with. should address the real issues right here there are very many other issues mm -hmm. there are people who um they've seen pornography mm -hmm. and so they want to act on it mm -hmm. and because porn shows you bdsm that mm -hmm. you get it in, when the girl says yes or mm -hmm. no it's still yes mm -hmm. uh, you know so, they so it's getting your knowledge from the wrong place yes getting so your sexual knowledge from the wrong place reasons that it's a mirage people. of reasons all right yeah. so uh, since we know where the problem is at and uh, i'm sorry to say all the public most mm -hmm. of the perpetrators are men yeah yes mm -hmm. uh, uh it's almost impossible <laughs> to have a a queen perpetrator, uh, a, a female perpetrator. There are. There are, interestingly. There are. And oh. right now the statistic, the statistic shows, like yesterday when I was with my, in the other panel, I was being told that the statistic currently shows that men are going through the highest GBV right now. Mm. Yes. And men don't talk. Yes. I, I hope you talk. can see my face. Yes. yes. Oh. Because you see your face, exactly <laughs> that reaction is what men get when they come and say, I have been raped. Yes. Or, because the, oh, someone uh, who just asked. I was beaten up by my wife. Or I was beaten up by my wife. Yeah. It's how. Where am I now? So they don't exact, come out. They, come they out. don't come out. Uh -huh. Like, whatever I'm going after, after this interview is also for another panel discussion. And we have a survivor who we've been working with really closely. Mm -hmm. And if you hear his story, you're like, okay, well, now no, mine is okay. And then you even feel uh -huh. you are okay. Because okay. we realize that men don't talk. Uh -huh. I will come tell Libby, you know, this happened, that happened. Mm -hmm. Libby, Libby will tell another person who is my friend and will now look for a way of making sure the person who did whatever it is to me pays. Uh -huh. But for a man, it's the societal how the society has made you guys feel mm -hmm. like y'all should not you're not supposed to to report you're mm -hmm. not supposed to feel a certain way wow so gender-based violence when we talk about gender-based violence it's not aligned to one particular sex yes or gender. It's, it's not. going both ways. It's, yes. It doesn't have age, it doesn't have race, it doesn't have gender, it doesn't have religion. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because if you look at even the Muslims who are being raped, mm -hmm. even look at Sudan mm -hmm. right now, the cases of rape are rising, mm -hmm. especially because of the unrest. Mm -hmm. When you look at Saudi Arabia, so many women are being raped. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, these women are wearing hijabs. hijabs. Baka macho. <laughs> You, you know, some of them you can cover the cut. Yeah. You yeah. cannot blame a miniskirt. Uh -huh. You know, so rape is all about power uh -huh. mm -hmm. and it's all about if you look at historical uses of rape uh -huh. during um colonial period uh -huh. during the black mm -hmm. liberation rape was used to make the men know that who is in power uh -huh. so they defile the wife uh -huh. to make the man stay in line wow yeah so it's not it's about a sad this. story white to fair four channel on twitter white fair four underscore channel on instagram and white fair four on facebook there's a way to interact with us be sure to join into this conversation your views your comments and your questions are invited don't forget the hashtag why in the morning and never ever forget to tell us where you're watching us from hashtag queens wednesday as well so it's a power thing yes yeah. it's and it's power. all here mm -hmm. yes wow moving forward Yes, because we cannot always be talking about the problem without yeah. solutions. Yeah. Moving forward, what do you think are some of the solutions we can we can give? Do we get uh, boys in uh, in class as soon as they get to class one? We get them to a class where we teach them how to treat women or what? I think first it's just awareness. Yeah. Um, going to primary schools and telling children this is how. Um, you're not supposed to be touched. No one should do this to you. No one should do this. And if they do this to mm -hmm. you, there's a place where you can come for help. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone knows that 
if this happens, I can go there. Mm-hmm. For sure, they will come. Mm-hmm. But what we have is people who don't know where to get help. Mm-hmm. People don't know that if you call GVRC, mm-hmm. which is Nairobi Women's, mm-hmm. that they'll come and rescue you for free, mm-hmm. where you are, mm-hmm. if you are raped. Mm-hmm. You know, so having that information, just having those discussions in family settings, having those discussions, mm-hmm. and prosecuting even family members who are perpetrators, mm-hmm. so other family members will know that this is something that we do not. Do over the family, here. Yes. Uh-huh. So having those discussions in the family setting, having those discussion in churches, mm-hmm. in mosques, in religious centers, mm-hmm. everywhere. So awareness, number one. Awareness, number one. Awareness, awareness, awareness. Yeah. I've always believed in conversation mm-hmm. and I've talk this, about things. Yes, talk about things. Mm-hmm. And I always want the men to spearhead mm-hmm. yes. this conversation mm-hmm. because we are known as emotional beings, mm-hmm. women. But when a man takes charge and says, by the way, this has been happening, mm-hmm. I feel like their voice is always heard mm-hmm. louder mm-hmm. for some reason. That is one. Number two, for some reason, I've always believed that it's like people are forgetting their moral principles. Mm-hmm. And we are seeing this because, from my experience, the person who raped me was not brought up by a man. Mm. And there's a way in which, when you see your, your dad treat your mom a certain way, mm-hmm. you'd want to treat your wife that way. That way. If your mm-hmm. dad treats your mom like mm-hmm. a queen, mm-hmm. you want to treat your wife someday as a queen. Mm-hmm. You'd want to protect your daughters and all that. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's always been how the men are treated from the word go mm-hmm. makes like forms who they are. Mm-hmm. If you grew up with a man, yes, if you grew up with a father beating up your mom, Mm -hmm. for some reason you'll just feel comfortable beating your wife. Mm -hmm. You pick up on the lessons. You pick Mm -hmm. up on the lessons. It's the same way you hear women have daddy issues. Why? It's because they are looking for that acceptance from a male figure. And daddy was never there. Daddy was never there. So he's looking for a daddy in another man. Uh So I feel like from the word go, how you bring up your child really matters. Mm -hmm. Because it's very hard for a man who has seen uh, sisters, mothers being treated in a certain uh-huh. way to go rape someone. Uh-huh. Or even a man who has been taught uh-huh. that this is the standard of how we treat women. women. And women who have been taught this is the standard of treating men. Uh-huh. Exactly. It, train up a child in the ways of the Lord and they will never depart from it. Exactly. That's a very fundamental principle. Mm-hmm. So you teach up a, a child that this is how women are treated, this is how men are treated and they will never Mm-hmm. They will never depart. They exactly. may stray once in a while, mm-hmm. but the fundamentals of it, they know. They the don't forget. Yeah. But what we're having is children who are brought are not brought up. We are mm-hmm. letting the screens right now well, yeah. right. bring up our kids. But I've never heard of something as a parenting school, you know. There's, there's no, nothing. No. There's no parenting school. There's no, uh-huh. parenting, there's school. no parenting school. But uh-huh. you learn lessons from one another. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So in our circles, that's why it's important that this rape discussion happens with with our parents, mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. our grandparents, mm-hmm. with us, mm-hmm. and then now with our our children. Right. Because generations are being brought up. Right now, we are at the statistics say every thirty minutes in Kenya, mm-hmm. a girl or woman is being raped. Mm-hmm. If right now, 2019, we are talking about every 30 minutes, mm-hmm. if we do not solve this problem, we're going to be talking about 2040, 20, mm-hmm. every five minutes, someone, someone is being, being raped. Wow. Yeah. The statistics, I said. Yeah. Yes. Just to uh, paint a picture of how this, this is a very bad crime or hideous one. Take us back to the Bible. You were sharing a story with me, cases where we've seen rape, uh, rape cases in yeah. the Bible and how they were handled. Um, I went into a phase where I was reading a lot about the Bible mm-hmm. and what they needed to because I'm a Christian mm-hmm. and I needed to do something. You know, people wait for something to happen to them so mm-hmm. that they become activists for mm-hmm. it. And for me, I, I just like, I can't, I can't go on looking at uh, my friends and thinking, I wish I could do something. Mm-hmm. So I went into this phase while doing the research for my song. Um, I was reading about what God did after someone was raped. Mm-hmm. So I'll give two instances. Dinah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dinah was raped and her brothers were infuriated. They were so angry. Mm-hmm. So what they did, um, the king who raped her came to the family and said, give us Dinah and let us marry her. Mm-hmm. Now the king was not from the community where the Israelites, yeah. So they were not circumcised. So mm-hmm. The brother said, "You guys have to be circumcised." Um, and this king said, "We'll give you anything you want mm-hmm. in this world. We'll give you anything. Just ask mm-hmm. for it and give us Dinah." So mm-hmm. the brother said, "Anything 
we want your whole community, your whole society, the whole city to be circumcised, the mm. men. So when they were circumcised, in the middle of the night, the brothers went into the city and slaughtered all the men. Because mm. they were still they nursing were healing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so it was a game plan. Mm. And Jacob, Jacob, now the father, asked them, why did you cause this war? Because now this will cause more mm -hmm. retaliation from that mm -hmm. community. And the brothers said, should we have allowed this man to treat our sister like a prostitute? And that statement cut me to the core. Mm -hmm. That the more we allow more women to be raped mm -hmm. and more men to be raped is saying that their lives are not worthy. Mm -hmm. That they're just sex tools that we can use and misuse and leave. Meanwhile, we have sisters and moms and yes. aunts. But we shouldn't be saying that. We shouldn't mm -hmm. wait until it happens to someone we love, then we care. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Rape is a fundamental offense. Mm -hmm. so it's it a capital offense. Exactly. Yes. Since then, people mm -hmm. died because uh, yes. of because uh, of one rape yes. case. Right the second case mm -hmm. is um, the Levite's wife, mm -hmm. co concubine. Mm -hmm. She was raped and left half dead in front of his house. And so what this husband did, mm -hmm. he cut her pieces in 12, sent to all the tribes of mm -hmm. Israel, mm -hmm. and told them that this is what has happened. And he, the Benjamites protected the perpetrators because it was a gang of men, mm -hmm. protected the perpetrators. And the whole tribe of Israel, mm -hmm. remember Benjamites were at tribe of, of Israel. Mm -hmm. So the whole 11 of them ganged up against Benjamites mm -hmm. and three times went to attack them mm -hmm. and killed all the men mm -hmm. because of one woman being raped. Mm -hmm. How many women are being raped mm -hmm. within this whole program? Mm -hmm. If the statistics say 30, mean it's one person. Mm -hmm. So in a two hour program, we have four people. Then billions and we have of done people nothing. Should, should have died by now. And that's in <laughs> Kenya. All right, that's, that's in Kenya. Kenya. The statistics wow. around the world are even more painful. Wow. Whew. And this is where you got inspiration for your song. Yes. All right. And this particular song is uh, against gender-based violence, as yes. much as it is religious. Yes. All right. What is the name of the song? The song is called Rise Again. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, when it took 16 months mm -hmm. um, writing this song mm -hmm. because of the research, you know, rape is a very touchy topic to mm -hmm. discuss. So um, I wrote it, the first part I wrote in February of 2018. Mm -hmm. And I walked into studio and I was so angry. Now after doing the research and I was, I was like, what do I need to mm -hmm. do? So I walked into studio and I remember singing out the verses and the verses are real life stories. Mm -hmm. So the first verse was important for me because a four year old in the newspaper had been raped by the uncle. Um, and the uncle had lured them inside the room by telling them, I'll give you a suite mm -hmm. in Ukuje and then raped the child. Mm -hmm. The second story is a very close colleague of mine. Um, she was raped. She left work late. Mm -hmm. And then you know the way you shuka matatu, um, this ocha ocha places like mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then the whole street, there's only one light, but that light was off that uh -huh. night. It was not working well. And so this guy pounced on her mm -hmm. and raped her. The second story is another close friend who her and her husband were her, he, her husband was beating her so she left the his house went and found another house mm -hmm. so in the middle of the night the guy comes and um he found her he tracked her down found her raped her and after raping he said that you are mine and you will never go anywhere you're my property and he walked out his act caused her to have countless number of surgeries because he had completely completely injured her Mm -hmm. She had to have, she had to be sewn up, her vagina had to be sewn up. She had, she got pregnant after that and then she had to, the pregnancy, she lost it again. So now you can imagine what she was going through. Mm -hmm. And so I sang out the verses and I was in tears. Mm -hmm. And then the middle part is a spoken word, um, which is a letter from the victim saying that this is what you did. You thought it was a few seconds of mm -hmm. pleasure, but for you it was a few seconds. For me... You auctioned me to a system that hides behind religion. Mm -hmm. You auctioned me to a system of justice that finds it easier to blame the victim mm -hmm. than hold the perpetrator accountable. Mm -hmm. But regardless of all that, I have a God who heals and restores. Mm -hmm. And you should know that this is me waging war and mm -hmm. I will not be silenced because no one deserves to be raped. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we sing out, um, I will rise again. And I want to say this, it was important for me to have the African chants in mm -hmm. the song mm -hmm. because that was an act of waging war. Mm -hmm. 
whenever africans used to go to war they would sing mm -hmm. before they actually do the actual yes. battle and in african culture it was the role of the men to take care of the community yes. the, the women and children yes and that's why i had manasseh shalom singing out the african chants mm -hmm. as a male representation that we are going to go f to war for you mm -hmm. and even if you look at the music video we had men from different ages saying that this is something we want to fight for you mm -hmm. and these were men who are very passionate about it and they reached out and they said we want to be a part of this project mm -hmm. yes wonderful i will rise again uh, by libby will be playing that in a few but before that jane uh, her, your last remarks to the people uh, that you're talking to right now and how can they get to be part of the support group that you run? Um, after I will rise, mm -hmm. let me just go to that. After rise again, mm -hmm. I remember uh, my friend and I sent Libby a text because mm -hmm. for some reason I got the link mm -hmm. and immediately I told you for a moment I was in the office and I stopped. Mm -hmm. It spoke to you, this song. For some, I relieved my moment, uh -huh. like through the song, I was relieving every moment I went through when I mm -hmm. got shipped. Mm -hmm. And I cried, and mm -hmm. I even told you that it moved me. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, we decided to start a movement, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and we are working on it, you all will hear about it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I really want to tell guys out there, number one, to the parents, mm -hmm. it's not the fault of your daughter or your son mm -hmm. when they get shipped. Mm -hmm. All they're looking for after that is a safe space. Mm -hmm. I will tell you for sure, the reason I maintain my smile mm -hmm. is because number one, there's someone fighting for me who is God. Mm -hmm. Number two, my parents were very instrumental. They're still there. Mm -hmm. There are times that um, I go through, I relieve my moments. Mm -hmm. I, I won't say that I healed completely. Mm -hmm. There are days that you walk, see a man and you're like, this is trash, mm -hmm. for lack of a better mm -hmm. term. And I relieve the moments mm -hmm. and I go through a whole phase and I just have to call my mom and tell mom, by the way, today I almost beat up someone mm -hmm. because of this, this and that. Mm -hmm. And number three, stop normalizing rape. Mm -hmm. Do not normalize it. It's and that is offense. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that is what is killing us as a society. Mm -hmm. We've decided to normalize this thing. Mm -hmm. When your daughter comes and it's your f the father who's done that, do not protect the, mm -hmm. the, the, the father. Do not, protect the, do not protect the offender, just as Libby has said. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, this is a war that all of us are fighting together. Mm -hmm. You have to protect your sister. And it's sad. For me, it's sad. Because when we were growing up, we were not talking about rape. Your mother wanted, like your mother wanted you to go play with the neighbors, mm -hmm. go play with whoever. Your mother didn't have the reservation of what if, uh -huh. you know. Right now, but it's the sad. We are getting into exactly. You will have to like right now, I have a daughter. Uh -huh. I'm sending her to go play with Libby's daughter, and I'm not so sure what is going to happen she there. Called uh -huh. me and find out the baby uh -huh. Mefika, you know. I'm a Fika, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. And that is not the society we grew up in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is not the society we want to raise our kids exactly. in. Exactly. So uh -huh. this is a war that all of us have to like come mm -hmm. together and fight mm -hmm. against. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. uh, how can they get to be part of the groups that you run sometimes? Um, mm -hmm. Right now we are in the starting processes mm -hmm. of whatever projects that we're doing. Because mm -hmm. personally for me, it's, um, it's a one-stop shop. Uh, when Libby was saying, mm -hmm. when you report, it, like there's the fear of going to report and we realize that the cops are also not being instrumental mm -hmm. in this because they make you relieve everything mm -hmm. so when we'll be ready i'll be posting mm -hmm. when i need a team mm -hmm. and things like that and i'm so sure meanwhile when, they can find you on social media yes what is your handle mm -hmm. okay on my, my instagram page is miss underscore james mm -hmm. with a y mm -hmm. um and my facebook page is james amondi ombok thank you very yes. much your social media my social media is Libby underscore Dumbo everywhere. Uh, what about yes. YouTube? The most YouTube important. YouTube is Libby Dumbo. The song uh -huh. is Rise Again. All right. Um, yes, and you can be part of the movement. Um, we are doing a movement on hoodies, the hoodie mm -hmm. I'm wearing. Uh -huh. and it has messages from the song. Uh -huh. So you can reach out to us on our social media platforms and we'll be able to plug in. The same one, Libby yes. Dumbo. Yes. All Dumbo. right. Thank you very much for coming and thank you very thank much you. for what you're doing. And thank you very much for the movement. We need this. Yes. For, uh, to secure a good future for our kids. Yes. All right, we have come to the end of the Strength of a Woman. And today we had amazing uh, queens in studio with me. We are about to listen to I Will Rise Again uh, by Libby. Then Kala Mival will be back with some more Why in the Morning Don't Go Nowhere. Wow, that was easy, right?
Mm. That was wonderful.